Hi again. So now we're going to talk about the back side of the shot sheet, and we are going to talk about angles and movement. Um, angles and movement, when you have a shot, you also have an angle featured. So um, you will always identify the shot and you will also identify the angle. They're two separate things that work together to create meaning on the screen. So first we're gonna talk about the angles and there are only six of them. And then we'll talk about um, movement. And movement has some video clips that I can share with you. Um, but it doesn't always, it's, yeah, we'll just go with that, okay? So. First and foremost, what you need to understand is an angle is how the camera um, is positioned to show what's on the screen. So it helps to evoke specific emotions, feelings in the viewer. For example, fear, empathy, or disorientation. This angle, what it does is it impacts you subconsciously so that when you see something shot from a particular angle, you are automatically um, feeling or experiencing something without even realizing it. Let me explain. So this is what we call a Dutch tilt. And if you, when you do Instagram or um, uh, Snapchat or whatever, Sometimes people take their phone and they're like this so that it looks all wonky. Well, that's a Dutch tilt. It's a camera angle deliberately slanted to one side. And when it does this, um, it creates several different feelings um, depending upon the rest of the movie. This is a frame from the movie 12 Monkeys. That's Bruce Willis. It also stars the beautiful Brad Pitt, but... It came out in the um, late 90s, early 2000s, and it deals with some sort of apocalyptic martial law type world. Also, time travel. It's been a while since I've seen it. So you can tell that it, that it deals a lot with the unknown. So this camera angle with this particular frame creates a feeling of unease or disorientation. You can see that Bruce Willis is experiencing this wonky feeling. It can also create a feeling of frantic or desperate action, intoxication or madness. So when somebody is intoxicated with drugs or alcohol and the camera's trying to create that or the director wants to create that feeling aside from just the actor portraying those, how a drunk person or um, a high or low person or whatever the drug does to them person is feeling, they'll manipulate the camera to, to make you feel that unbalanced feeling, okay? Next, you have eye level. A lot of the time, this is what we get when we just want to create a neutral situation. There's a an even balance of power. The camera points straight ahead, and it's the most natural angle. The intention is to be objective, to be neutral. So in this frame from um, Forrest Gump, this would be like you or I standing across from Tom Hanks, like we're having a conversation. This, if we were sitting across him, yes, I would be shorter than him, but we would still be on the same level. And that's what eye level does. When it comes to high angle, this is where the camera is situated and it points down from a higher angle. This Pointing down from a higher angle creates a weak or powerless feeling for whoever's on camera, okay? So if you think about someone who is powerful, um, most of the time they, they seem larger than life. They're presented as up here compared to 
whoever is not as powerful as them. So it makes what's on the screen seem small. And that's what this high angle is doing right here. Something's coming and you Marvel fans will know what's happening in this scene. I've not seen the movie. We're not going to talk about that right now. Um, but this creates this feeling of whatever situation those two are in, they are at a disadvantage. They are small compared to whatever is coming at them. The opposite of a high angle is a low angle, and that's where the camera is featured lower and it points up. It makes the person look larger, powerful, strong. So again, they seem in this particular angle to have, um, they, they come across as bigger. They come across as uh, taller, more powerful. And you may see like two people facing one another, or you may be involved in a conversation. And when person one is talking to person two, maybe it's shot like person one is shot at a low angle because it shows the balance of power is in their hand. And person two is shot from a high angle because they're smaller. However, depending upon the conversation, the angle could switch if person two gained the power over the situation. Okay. All right. Top angle bird's eye view. Um, yes, bird's eye view crane shot. However, this kind of gives you. I don't know. It, it's kind of a repetitive definition, and I struggled with where to put it. Um, but this is where it's shot from above the subject, not just at a high angle, but it's like you are looking down on the subject and it shows their world, the scale of whatever problem or insignificance the character is facing. So, oh my gosh, there's so much we could do with this particular shot but, or frame, but we're not going to do it. I won't, I won't go on about it. Okay. So those are your six angles. Those six angles are going to be, or excuse me, they're five angles because we gave the definition of angle and what it does. Those five angles are going to be featured in whatever shot is being shown. Those, that's how it works. You're always going to have a shot with an angle. Maybe it's for a, much of the time, it is a medium shot from an eye level angle. And you're like, there is nothing but medium eye level stuff going on in this film. And that's okay. But you need to clearly identify the shot and the angle. Okay. So work on putting those in your brain. All right. Let's talk about movement. Movement is where the camera moves between angles easily, sometimes within the same shot. So that person one, person two idea, okay? There are several, so there are seven different types of movement that we'll talk about. Um, some of them are much more rare or much more, um, are, are, are not used as much. Okay, our first one is a 360 um, degree movement. It showcases the subject by moving all the way around. So you've got your subject is right here and your camera is going all the way around. So it gets the entire view, all sides of whatever it is that it is focused on. That's the movement. So maybe it's a full shot at an eye level, but the camera movement is going around, staying at that eye level shot and staying at the full shot distance. And it's just moving around so you can see everything involved. All right, a dolly zoom. Okay, I don't know why, what's missing over here to tell you the truth. Okay, so a dolly zoom. This is also called the vertigo shot because Alfred Hitchcock, who um, produced, directed Vertigo, created this shot. And I apologize for not having an example, so I'm going to do my best with 
hand motion. All right, so the camera dollies in or out and it zooms in or out at the same time. So it's used to surprise the viewer by withdrawing from a scene to reveal a, an object or character previously out. So the camera, the actual camera lens itself is either zooming in or zooming out. That part of the camera is zooming in or zooming out. And at the same time, the entire camera is moving. So maybe the entire camera is moving in closer, but the lens is zooming out. So you have this feeling of this, okay? Or you're going the opposite. The camera is zooming, or excuse me, the camera is, the entire device is moving in, but the lens is zooming out, okay? All right, so then you have the pan, and the pan and tilt are the two terms that people get confused, okay? The pan, the camera stays still. The entire device stays still, and it moves from side to side. So this is the camera stand, and this is the camera. And the camera itself, the camera lens, is going from side to side. It does not change location. It is not doing this. It, it, the, it's moving from side to side. So in this example of the Game of Thrones, from the Game of Thrones, there's a lot going on, but the camera is here, and it's moving over. Going over so you see whatever chaos is happening over here. Okay? All right. Now we have tilt, and this is where the camera is stationary. Its stand is stationary. However, the lens of the camera is moving up and down. All right? It doesn't go up and down like this. But the, the lens is moving up and down. This clip from Shawshank is super, super short. So you might want to rewatch it more or watch it more than one time. Um, but here you are. You notice the camera is going to follow this record up so we can see his face. We do not need to see what that is. Okay. Um. Let's turn off autoplay while we're here. Okay. All right. Next we have tracking dolly, and that's where the camera follows this and, and follows and moves with the subject. So camera like this. Now the camera is tracking with the object. Okay? So it could this is not panning because we're changing location, but, and it's not tilting because we're changing location. Um, but it tracks or follows and moves with the subject. You'll see it from a couple of different angles in this Rocky clip and after we get past my All right, okay. so we start out, and now Rocky's getting ready to make his big run. And he, the camera is moving with him. So it is just going along with his run. It's staying with him. Okay? And we're not going to watch the whole thing. There are several different parts where it shows he's entering the screen or enters the scene. And now, especially here, it would be tracking with him. You really feel like it, you can watch all two minutes and 12 seconds with it. Okay. Our last one, no, I'm sorry. The next one is whip. And this is not where you nay nay or anything. It's where the camera pans super quickly, blurring the picture into streaks. This is sometimes used for a transition and it can indicate a passage of time 
or a frenetic pace. It is meant to make you feel cool, okay? Because it's a quick movement. Here in Cloverfield, you'll see it a couple of times. That's the way it that's the way. You notice how it blurs and it moves back. It is a super quick, there was a bell for the end of, Okay, I don't know what, what just ended, to tell you the truth. Um, but it is meant to show um, kind of chaos, if you will. The last one is Zoom, and you all know what Zoom is. It is the, you use it with Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is that you all use. You know that something zooms in to make it look closer or it zooms out to make it look further. But just so you can see it in an actual movie example, here we have a zoom out. And actually, that's a better example almost of the vertigo shot because you are zooming in on him, but the background is zooming out. So maybe I should put that with also with the... Um, uh, vertigo dolly zoom shot okay so those are your angles and your movements go back over them make sure you understand um, and you are working on identifying them again high angle and low angle people get confused by the high angle is when the camera is shot from up here and the low angle is when it's shot from down here okay um and then I'll move on in the next one to lighting, and we'll do some editing, and we'll finish up with sound and focus. So I will see you shortly.